Get ready for the countdown. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. It's still Welcome, everybody. Welcome to the February 16th, 2012, episode number 105 edition of the Still Real Test Show. We are on the road to WrestleMania 28. Six more shows to go here. WrestleMania 28. We are in the midst of the road to WrestleMania. I am one half of the wrestling podcast, Tag Team Champions of the World. I am the champ, Jeff Peck. And joining me, as always, in the booth, editor-in-chief of CamelClutchBlog.com, former announcer for ECW ROH and CZW, the one and only Eric Argillo. Eric, how are we this week, my man? Uh, we're doing well. Very busy week. Uh, excited to be back. And uh, I know just from our uh, our little pregame conversation here, a lot to talk about. Yeah, we, we had a, like a good eight to ten minute conversation before this show um, about going into I'm, it. I'm done. All right, me too. We should have recorded it, but right. uh, you know how that goes. But a lot to talk about this week. We are. Uh, this is the show just before this coming Sunday, Elimination Chamber. Um, uh, a huge change in TNA wrestling and their booking. Uh, announcements are being made for WrestleMania locations. A, a former WWE champion has been injured yet again. A new person is replacing him in the Elimination Chamber. A very popular gimmick and wrestler that just debuted last month has all of a sudden been shelved. And then we had Monday Night Raw. So there's a lot to discuss on this week's show. Um, let's just kick it right into gear here, right off of Monday Night Raw. Eric and I were discussing, and, and I really wish that someday we could do this where we just do a live show during a Monday Night Raw, invite a whole bunch of guys, you know, from the Wrestle Chat, CCB group, and, and just do a show like Mystery Science Theater, Theater 3000 because the, the tweets, my Twitter feed was just blowing up with some hilarious, twi- uh, hilarious tweets from uh, Eric and, and Captain Obvious, Brett, Justin Henry from the Camel Clutch blog, and, and, and so on, Ben Lopez, and just fans that, that enjoy wrestling. And Monday Night Raw, Eric, I, 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 it's funny, anybody who knows follows me on, on the wheelhouse, Mike Bauer. Uh, asked me before the, I did the show tonight, said, uh, I read your Twitter feed, and you were really bashing, you know, Monday Night Raw, what went on, and I just really could not explain it to him. I just said there was a lot of horrible segments, a lot of horrible storylines. I saw a statistic that was posted at WrestleChat.net that there was 21 minutes of in-ring action, and I completely believe that. Um, let's talk about the good, because there wasn't a lot of good to be to begin here. I, Eric, I... I may think that th- I think this may be one of the worst Monday Night Raws that I've seen in some time. D- do you think it's it's up there with one of the worst, maybe even embarrassing Monday Night Raws of all time? Yeah, I mean, you know, I try to think back, and there have been some pretty awful Raws, but this one may have just been uh, really at the top of the list. Um, you know, it just seemed to me, you, you know, I, I don't think that there's a problem with some soap opera esque. Uh, writing or angles in wrestling. I mean, I really don't, you know, I mean, wrestling's always had uh, those kind of angles anyway, you know, some, some good, a lot bad. So, you know, there are some people that just don't want it at all in their wrestling. And I can totally respect that, but you know, I, I, I can also be open to the fact that I, I can understand that there is a place for it, but to cram, uh, you know, an entire show, full of about, you know, 80% worth of these soap opera-esque angles, 
I mean, was just mind boggling. It was just, you know, nothing that appeals to me, nothing uh, that appeals, I'm sure, to, to a lot of the people that, that, that uh, download and listen to this show, that, that read my website, that probably listen to The Wheelhouse. I mean, you know, I really don't know what audience they're targeting. And I mean, we'll get into the raw ratings and, and how this reflected momentarily, but I really don't know what they were thinking because, you know, um, the elimination chamber is what a couple of days away. Um, on Monday, it was, uh, six days away and they finished the show with, uh, with an angle that did nothing to promote the, the top two matches on the Elimination Chamber show. You know, uh, from from what I can remember, the last couple of years, you would always close out the show strong with some kind of mystery uh, leading up to the championship match. I mean, I don't know if it was just uh, a case of hotter crowds or or maybe just uh, my memory is, is deceiving me. But, I, you know, I mean, I remember last year as being a much more exciting time in the WWE around this, this time period, right around the, the rumble and elimination chamber, the now, and you know, it all goes back to the writing and you know, this stuff with, with Cena and Zack Ryder, you know, it's like some of it, I don't really mind. And the funny thing is Jeff, I mean, I don't even think it's that bad of an angle. I just think you got the wrong people in it. You know I mean? I think it's an angle that could work for the right three or four people, but I just don't think that they're the right people and, you know, again, the, the show did nothing to to strengthen the Elimination Chamber uh, competitors. You know, on the Raw side, you know, you had Punk finish super strong. And that was really it. You know, you had, I, I think Dolph Ziggler lost. You know, Miz got squashed. Uh, Jericho beat Kofi in a competitive match. You know, I wouldn't call it a squash. So you have CM Punk, and, and that, that's really it. And I don't know. I was just left scratching my head at the end of raw just just wondering um you know how this script made it to television yeah i i mean i i completely agree i i have been someone who's tried to defend the john cena zach Ryder, kane storyline the last couple of weeks uh in blogs tweets here on the show and they lost me this past monday night because i agree completely that this angle could have worked if you had the right three people because we've seen soap opera-esque angles in wrestling before it's just sometimes when the wrong people are in those places, it, it's just horrible. I mean, you start with the ambulance scene, where uh, and, and that's how I t- title it, an- ambulance scene, because that's not a segment. It wasn't wrestling to me. And Eve goes inside the ambulance, uh, is locked in, and I actually saw someone make a point to this, because it is true, because you can't do it. I, I work in emergency services outside this uh, outside the show. He Kane locks the ambulance from the, the inside, um, and he gets in the front, to start pulling away, John Cena is trying to open up the the uh, the back door, and Eve has a tough time opening the lock. And then all of a sudden, Kane knows how to turn on the siren and lights on the ambulance, and and he pulls away. Eve yeah. comes out, and then it's just this horrible, awkward kiss scene with with Zack Ryder. Um, and then it's followed up with that segment at the end there, where you know Zack Ryder, who at one time was a United States champion, you know the second highest title on Monday Night Raw. Um, and, and, oh, and I forgot the whole Just Friends comment, you know, yeah. uh, from Eve to Zack Ryder, and then that whole segment there with, with Cena and Ryder. Inside the ring wasn't that bad, because um, you could you, you could understand a little bit here, two baby faces, there's some sort of emotional, and you know, stuff going on. Ryder leaves the ring, and then Kane throws him off the stage. Eric, I don't even know what to say. It, it was hilarious, it was funny, horrible acting. Zack Ryder, in, in my opinion, as of right now, has been completely buried. Any worse than The Miz was in his match with CM Punk. Um, it, it, I, I, I don't get it. I, I, I just don't get it. Uh, maybe if, if Kane didn't look so goofy in his outfit. Maybe if Cena wasn't a horrible actor, which, by the way, I saw on WrestleChat.net before I came on the show here tonight that he is returning to the Marine series. Awesome. Um, maybe if Eve wasn't a horrible actor, I, you know, it was just wrong parts, wrong people. I, I completely agree, but I, I, I tweeted this to Justin Henry cause I know he works at this site, but it is wrestle crap material. What did you say? Well, you know, one thing I will disagree with you on, and it's funny you bring this up and, and this is nothing you and I even talked about before the show, but I say it's funny because I was actually considering writing a blog, writing a blog on this. Um, and, and, and that was what, what you said about Zack Ryder being buried. 
And I see a lot of people um, just just enraged at the way that Zack Ryder is being booked and Zack Ryder is being used right now. And while I can understand where you're coming from, and I don't mean you, Jeff. I just mean you know uh, the 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 critics in general. Absolutely. Um, you can't have it both ways. 